In this video, I'm going to show you how you can introduce page-based pagination into your application. So for this pagination example, I'm going to be using Mongoose, but this is going to work with any database. I'm going to be using React for the front end, but this is also going to work for any UI library or framework. And I'm going to be using Fastify for the back end, but this doesn't really matter. You can do this with any back end. It doesn't even need to be Node.js. So what we learn, you'll learn the page-based pagination strategy. And the reason that I'm using page-based pagination is that it's easy to implement, it's versatile, and it's very common. I'm not going to bore you by setting up an application from scratch because I already have this example application here. And this contains enough detail to start with the page-based pagination example. So we have this server folder here and we also have a client. We have a data folder here and data just has two files in it. One is to upsert some data and one is just an array of products that are going to be upserted. So you'll be able to find a link to this repository in the description below and you'll be able to use this file here to insert some data into your MongoDB database. And then we have a source folder and we have this DB file here that's going to create a connection to our MongoDB database and we also have a disconnect function and we have this index file, and this is just going to start up a Fastify server. So the one route that we're going to be working with is this get route for slash products. The fact that this is Fastify is pretty relevant. You're going to be able to do this with any other framework such as Express or Happy. And then we're just starting the application. Then we have a products model here. In the client, we have a single component, and this is to list out the products. And this is where we're going to be doing the majority of our work. And then we of course have an index and our underscore app. I'm using Next.js for this, but you can use any framework you like. It doesn't even need to be React. The concepts are going to be the same. Let's have a look at what our application looks like right now. You can see that I'm listing out the products here and it is a massive list of products. We have about 400 here and we want to be able to paginate through each of these so we just have a page with 20 products on each page. And you can see that we're making a network request here to the products endpoint, and we're going to get back a list of 400 products. So the first piece of work that I'm going to do is going to be on the client. So I'm going to create a constant called page. So I'm going to say const, and then I'm going to open up my brackets equals and say use state. And I'm just going to set the default value to one. I'm going to call this page and I'm going to say set page. And then I'm going to have another state property and this is going to be called page count. And then this is going to say set page count. And I'm just going to default this to zero. So one thing to note here is that we're starting on page one and not page zero. And this is going to cause us a little problem later on, but it's better for the user experience and we can easily fix that problem. So on our request here to get products, Let's change this to a templated string and I'm going to add a query string and I'm just going to say page equals and then I'm going to pass in our page property here. So the idea is that we have this page property here that starts with one. So when we first load this page, we're going to load page one and then we're going to be able to click next and previous and go through the pages. So you can see here that we're just listing out some products and I'm going to add a footer here and on the footer, I'm going to add a button. And this button is going to say previous. And then I'm going to have another button here. And this button's just going to say next. So our previous button is going to call a function that decrements our page. And then our next button is going to call a function that increments our page. Let's say function handle previous and then function handle next. So for previous, we want to get the current value of page, and then we just want to decrement it by one. So to do this, we can say set page, and then set page, we could just say page plus one, but there's a better way of doing this. The set function can take a callback, and the argument inside the callback is the current value. And we want to say return, P minus one. But what happens if we're on page one? We don't want to go any lower than that. We want to just return nothing. Let's say if P is equal to one, let's return P. And this means the lowest we can go is page one. 
for handle next, let's say set page, and we can provide our callback again. And then we can say return p plus one, but we don't want to set page greater than our page count. So let's say if p is equal to page count, then we just want to return p. Okay, so let's say handle previous and say on click equals handle previous and then our next button, the on click handle is going to be equal to handle next. And I want to disable the previous button if we're currently on the first page. So I'm going to say disable is equal to page equals one. And I want to disable the next button if we're on the last page. So I'm going to say disabled is equal to page equals page count. So I'm just going to add some simple styles so we can easily see this footer. And so you can see our footer here and we have a disabled previous button because we're currently on page one. And then we have a next button and we can click our next button and it's just going to call our API again. And you can see that it's adding the query string here. So it says page 18 and 17. So the next thing we want to do is go into our server and recognize the page query string. So I'm gonna open up the source and I'm gonna open up index. And you can see here we're using products.find and we're just finding every single product in the database. So the first thing I wanna do is declare a variable that specifies how many products we should show on a page. So I'm going to say const items per page is equal to 20. If you want to show 25 items per page, just change this number and all your other code should work. The next thing I need to do is to get the page out of the query string. So I'm going to say const page is equal to request dot query dot page or zero. So this should be all one. So if you're using express, this is going to be slightly different. The next thing I need to do is to get the count of the items that match our query. So I'm going to say const count equal to await products dot estimate document count and I'm just going to pass in an empty object. If you're querying by say a search field or a product price or even multiple fields, you need to declare the query up here. So you're going to say const query equal to and we're going to have an object here that is our query and this is going to filter based on your search or your product price or anything. And you, you need to put this query into your estimate document count query. And you're also going to need to do it in your query to get all the items. So I'm going to change res to items. And actually let's add this query here. And I'm just going to add a note here that says, put all your query params in here but we're just going to have an empty object for simplicity's sake. And the next thing I need to do is to return a different object here. So I'm going to return an object and this object is going to say pagination. And I'm going to have another object here and I'm going to have my count and I'm going to have my page count. So how do we get page count? Well, our page count is going to be our count divided by items per page. So this is going to say if we have 400 items, then how many pages do we have if we have 20 items per page? And so it's going to be 400 items divided by 20 equals 20. And the last item that we need to add to our return is our items. We can come back to our list products component. And if we go to our UI, you can see that we get an error here. And the reason is because we changed the data that is returned. 
So instead of mapping through data, I need to now map through data.items. And you can see that our items are now being mapped through. So we're also returning the page count. So we need to set this page count here. So I'm going to use use effect to do this. So I'm going to say use effect. And I'm going to say if data, then set page count. And this is going to be equal to data dot pagination dot page count. And then our use effect hook is going to have a dependency on data. So let's print some of these items to the DOM so we can see what our current page is and what our page count is. Okay, it's a little hard to see, but our current page is one and then our page count is 20. So if we click next, you can see that our page goes to two and our page count stays at 20. But we have a little problem here. And if we watch this item here, we keep going through and we just keep getting the same data. And the reason for that is because we need to skip some items. So as we iterate through our pages, we need to skip the items on previous pages. So I'm going to say const skip is equal to page times items per page. And this is the number of items to skip. So let's say we're on page two, then we have two times 20. And so we're going to skip the first 40 items. Remember before how I said that this is going to cause a little problem where we start at page one instead of page zero. So when we're on page one, one times 20 is 20. So we're going to skip the first 20 items, but we don't want to do that. We want to skip zero items for page one. So to fix that, we're just going to do page minus one. So now we need to use this skip variable. And down here where we find our items, we need to say dot skip. And then we put in our skip parameter here. So if we come back, you can see that we're going through our pages but we have a lot of items here still. We have more than 20. In fact, I think we have all 400 items being listed here. And the reason for that is because we need to call limit. So I'm gonna say products.find.limit and I'm going to limit this to items per page. Let's go back. I'm gonna refresh our app. And we're on page one, I'm going to go to page two and you can see that the first item here changed and we can keep going through and I'll go through to page 20. And you can see that the next button here is disabled and we have 20 items on the last page. So the last thing I want to show you is a little bit of an optimization. So you can see here that we're waiting for count to return and then we're waiting for the items, but these two aren't necessarily dependent on each other. So to fix this, I can say count promise is equal to, and then I'm going to get rid of the await keyword. And then I'm going to say items promise, and I'm going to get rid of the await keyword again. And then I'm going to say const open up some array brackets equals await promise.all. And I'm going to create an array and I'm going to put in my count promise and then I'm going to put in my items promise. Then the first item to be returned is going to be our count and then the next item is going to be our items. So page count is reliant on our count promise being resolved. So I need to move page count down below and let's go try this. So you can see our API has returned the data for page one. If we have a look at the payload, you can see that we have 20 items in the payload here and we can click through and each page is returned. I'm going to show you one more feature because this is where page-based pagination really shines over something like cursor-based pagination. So it's quite common to have these previous and next buttons, 
but you might also want a option list to skip to a certain page. So we can say select, we can say array, and we want to make this array the size of our page count. So I'm going to say page count dot fill, and I'm just going to fill this with null, and then I'm going to map over these items. And then for each item in the array, I'm just going to return an option. And I'm going to skip over the first item in map and I'm going to get the index. And then I'm going to place the index inside the option. I'm going to give these a key. I'm just going to use the index. If we go have a look what this looks like on the UI, you can see here that we have a select list with 19 pages and we're starting at zero. So we just need to fix this offset. So we can say index plus one. So you can see we're starting at page one and then we go all the way to page 20, which is going off the screen now, which is a bit unfortunate. And then on our select, we need to say on change is equal to a function. And in the function, we take the event and then we need to set page to event dot target.value and then we also want the select to show our current page. So I'm going to say value is equal to page. So if we go back to our application and refresh, you can see that we start on page one and then we can select page six and we're going to load results for page six. So we can verify that by looking at this network request and you can see also that our select is going to show the current page that we're on and this should match the page over here. Try this again, page 13. Yep, it updates our page and loads the results for page 13. So that is a simple and effective pagination strategy. If you like this video, please make sure you leave a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more JavaScript tutorials. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.